Hi guys, my name is Avaldas Karosas and I've been doing stand-up comedy for about four years now. And this year, for the first time ever, my friend and I are taking a solo show to Edinburgh Festival French. What is that? In short, it's the biggest arts festival in the world, at least that's what it says on Wikipedia. And it's gonna take place from August 5th to August 29th, which means it starts in four days. And we're gonna perform there every day for over three weeks with no days off. And this video is my attempt to show you the behind the scenes of both uh, Edinburgh Fringe and what it's like to be an aspiring stand-up comedian in general. Now let's go to Edinburgh! Okay, so to make this more interesting to watch, we need goals. Uh, that's why I came up with five things I want to achieve during this month. Doing this festival is going to cost me about 2,000 pounds, which is all I have. Which means I do not have enough money to pay my next month's rent in London. Uh, so our first goal is to earn 800 pounds so I don't become homeless once the festival ends. That is some real life stakes for you. Also, throughout this month, Edinburgh is going to be full of stand-up shows you can perform at, and I'd like to do a hundred of them. Our own show is going to be an hour long, we're going to do half an hour each, so by the end of the month, I'd like to have a really strong 20-minute set prepared for autumn, uh, so I can gig all around the UK in comedy clubs. Okay, how will I know that my 20 minutes are good? By the end of August, I'd like to be seen by the industry which means I want someone from the media or an agency to come by and watch me do my set. Goal number five, resisting the sweet temptations of alcohol and keeping my sanity intact. Okay, that's it for goals. The festival starts in four days, but we're already in Edinburgh, so let's see if there's any gigs we can get on. Erica, do you know any gigs I can get on? Okay, so I've tried my best. We're not getting on any shows today, but Erica is doing her one hour preview this evening. That's where we're gonna go. And afterwards, she's been invited to a networking event and I am her plus one. There's gonna be a lot of professional comedians there and I'll have to lick their asses to get spots. And I hope I'll be able to do that so it's not clear what I'm doing. <music> Okay, so Erica finished her show, it was good, and now we are at the networking event, and I hate it, I'm in a toilet right now, as you can see, because like we came here and she knows everybody, I know nobody, and uh, you know, I'm just like her shadow, and it's like, hey, it's me, a person you've never seen before, and it's, everyone is a professional comedian, so you have to feel funny, you have to be funny, you feel pressured to be funny, anyway, I'm going to try my best, I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to, I'm going to try and small talk, I promise I'm going to do it. Oh man, I love this place. Yeah. I don't think Michael Jackson was a pedophile. Okay, so I just woke up. It's day three until day one. I wanted to make a cool shot of me looking through the window, but this is uh, way too dirty. Okay, so I just came back from the printers and I brought home our posters and they are not looking amazing um yeah it looks very rapey i don't know why we thought that it's gonna look cool to have like half of our faces in the dark but it looks malicious and also if you look if you look at the poster uh, during daylight you can see how many pimples our foreheads have and this stupid facial hair Oh, I just heard, I just heard a doorbell. So Dan just came, Dan Tiernan is a good friend of mine and he also has a few shows he, uh, he's running in Edinburgh French. I am showing them our posters. Sure. Uh, showing people who are gonna watch ah. this. Oh, look, look at it, look at it in the, in the broad daylight. <laughs> just look at it. 
I think it's you that, like, Michael doesn't look too bad. Oh, so it's just me who looks rapey? You, no, you, you both look rapey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, I, I think he'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> but why didn't they, why, did, why didn't he Photoshop the pimples out? Look at, look at my, look, it looks like I have a black eye. Yeah. It looks like I have a black eye. It looks like I haven't slept for a week. Yeah. This is what you look like by the end of the fringe. Uh, this is before and this is after. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Nice time. Nice time. Well, I'm made now, so... Yeah, okay, we're gonna go and put them in hostels and shit. Okay, so I reckon it's a good time to mention that not only do we run the split hour show, but we also have a compilation show, which means it's my friend and I are gonna be on it all the time and there's gonna be three other acts doing 10 minutes each. It's a good way to get booked on other shows when you book someone, in, uh, someone else on your show. How are people gonna notice my poster if there's so many posters all around? There's no point in putting that poster here. It doesn't make any sense. Well, but that's what everybody does, so I'll do that too, I guess. He has a poster there, and then three posters there, just upon the entrance. Ooh. That should be illegal. Let me shame you in front of whole Lithuania. Peter E. Davidson, sleepyhead, is greedy. <laughs> <laughs> Whose poster is this? Oh, Dan Tiernan's, Rock is the Entertaining, <laughs> The Guardian. I feel like your lemon is... Who less rapey. <laughs> it's less rapey than our actual poster. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Okay, so we just finished putting posters up, and this is. Let me. So, so they cannot hear me speak. We are at another networking event, and I'm gonna try my best and be normal this time. Hey, nice party, right? I don't think Michael Jackson was a pedophile. Okay, so it's one day until the Fringe officially starts, but everyone is starting their shows today. Our main show starts tomorrow, but today we start our compilation show that I mentioned uh, before. What I have to do now is I have to flyer, which means I have to bother people, because if I don't, there's going to be no audience members. That's just how it works, because we're not famous, we're not known, and this is Michael, this is the guy we run shows with, and he's flyering too right now. Guys, comedy for hot people. We need you there. No problem. Guys, comedy for hot people. We need you there. 10.30, this bar. Guys, comedy for hot people. Guys, comedy for hot people. Guys, 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 girls, guys, 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 guys. Four hours of this each day. Just because I don't make TikToks. Hello there. Guys, guys, hello. Guys, 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 comedy for hot people. Comedy oh, hot look at yourselves, we need you there. This evening? This evening, it's in an hour, right, right there. It's called Garden Room. Welcome to the stage, your MC, the hilarious. Yeah, it's called Comedy for Hot People, uh, Iron Knight. Um, recently I started to feel like I might have body dysmorphia because uh, whenever I look at myself, I think, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Even my name was like, you know, Michael Mannion, strong alliteration, good initials, M&M, &M, was I to think. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, Kaylee? I'm also pre-law. <laughs> are you more likely to be a solicitor than him? More likely to do law after you finish it. And you do musical theatre as well? In high school I did. What an annoying set, set of attorneys that would be. You'd be like, Your Honour! This man did nothing in the park you need to worry about. They face this allegations. Start the clapping and cheering. Hey guys, how are you? Good? Yeah. Oh, this is so good. About two hours ago, I did a 20 minute set in front of one person. <laughs> it's not a comedy gig, it's a hostage situation. 
So this is amazing. Uh, I've been really annoyed lately because uh, I've realized that as a man, you cannot compliment children loudly without people thinking you want to diddle them. <laughs> Stay with me. I know it's a hard opener, but we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna get there. I was with my housemates, right? I was with my housemates yesterday, and the neighbor's son was playing outside, and he's 12, and I was like, what a good-looking boy. And they were like, ugh. And I was like, how stupid of a pedophile would I have to be to express myself so loudly? No pedophile has ever walked into a room full of his housemates like, hey, the neighbor's boy, what a forbidden fruit. Am I right? Don't leave me hanging on this one, guys. <laughs> you, know, you know when we fly our comedy for hot people, we usually lie, but you guys are really hot. Like, you are all at least a seven. <laughs> okay, some of you are like, that is not enough. <laughs> and the rest of you are uh, men. Um, <laughs> let, me, let me show you something. A, a blot if you were a girl and you'd be fine with someone calling you a seven. A blot if you are a guy and you'd be fine with someone calling you a seven. <laughs> That's just the only compliments we get are from grandmas. <laughs> and when people say beauty is subjective, I don't know. I was uh, I was in a bar with a female friend, and she was like, I don't even like hot guys. I like nerds, like that guy. And I looked at him, and it was a hot guy with glasses. <laughs> and he's not a, not a nerd, just a hot guy with bad eyesight. <laughs> okay, guys, you've been really, really good. Uh, you have a great night ahead of you. Thank you so much, and get your host back on. It's a documentary. Okay, so we're going home now because we have to wake up early tomorrow because we have to fly her before our main show, which is 1.30 p.m. I am, I am worried. Is this filming? Uh, it is filming. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I would love to say something. Cabaret Volta, yeah, Thursdays in Edinburgh on the right-hand side. Make sure to come check it out. Techno downstairs, disco upstairs. I'll see you there next Thursday. I'm playing. It is going to come out in a month, so. I was playing last month. It was a great set. But every Thursday at Carval. Okay, this is the day's over. That's it. <laughs> so this is day one of the French, and we just came to our venue, and uh, it's horrible. It's so so bad. First of all, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's impossible to fly her here because there's no foot traffic. Like you can see some people passing by, but it's mostly just people uh, coming from the train station. It's old people, families and stuff. And the room itself, it's not separated from the bar. Like it's in the same place as the bar is. Even if we do have a show, it's gonna be a horrible show in front of two old people. I, <laughs> a month of this, welcome to the French. Guys, stand-up comedy in an hour. Lunchtime stand-up comedy, isn't yeah. it the best? <laughs> This is not the best place to fly her, so I think I'll just go uh, there on the main street. But it's just families, it's just families, people running errands, people working. No one's here going to see a show at 1.30 p.m. Ugh. Yes. I don't know how to sell it yet. I, yes. I said, do you want to have a nice time in 30 minutes to someone? That's my first instinct. But you have to tell a stand-up comedy. I know, I That's know. That's the thing. I go stand-up comedy in... <laughs> stand -up. Does it look like we're hating on gay people? Straight stand-up, no gimmicks. <laughs> gimmicks being sexuality other than being sexual. <laughs> what have we done? We've made a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we just finished flyering. Let's see how many people we got in. Hey, how you feeling? Yeah, me too. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So we cancelled our show, obviously. We are not going to perform to empty chairs. Uh, and it wasn't unexpected because the venue is in a very, very bad location. It's very hard to fly or hard to get people in. So our plan right now is to do other people's shows. And when people are leaving the venue, we're going to flyer them. It's called exit flyering. And uh, our hope is that we do so well, they want to see more of us. And that's how we're going to get some audience. And we are expecting this is going to pay off in about a week or so. So we have a horrible week 
ahead of us with no audience members and uh, yeah. And when we canceled our gig on the way home, we went to see another girl's show and she's 25, younger than me, and she sold out, she's really good, she's great, and this is, this is the thing about Edinburgh Fringe, is you're surrounded by other people's success. And even if you're successful, you're gonna compare yourself to other people who are more successful than you, it never ends. But I'm not discouraged yet, we have a full month ahead of us, and today actually I'm doing three shows. It's our show, Comedy for Hot People, then my friend's show and my other friend's show. We're gonna try and kill, and then we're gonna try and exit flyer these people, and now I'm off to do some flyering. I actually have a friend who got rich through Bitcoin, no matter how rare it is, and you know, he's so rich now, I'm so broke, it's so annoying, and easy money made him forget what it's like to be broke. Like, he just bought a watch for five grand, and he showed it to me, and I was like, dude, for five grand, I could have Followed you around and told you what time it is. <laughs> I can count your steps if you want me to. I was like, why would you need such an expensive watch? And he goes, well, obviously, because women like it. And I was like, you know what makes it easier to pick up women than a five grand watch? Five grand. <laughs> the only person you can have sex with if you have that kind of watch is another guy with that kind of watch. Because <laughs> he's going to recognize it's expensive. You know, like... What kind of women is my friend aiming for? Like he's gonna be in a bar and some girl's gonna walk up to him with a monocular like, Is this gold? <laughs> Cause if it is, I might fuck you. No, 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 I'm just gonna... <laughs> hey guys, it's... <laughs> Hey guys, it's day two. Yeah. We're in the bunker, 30 minutes until showtime, zero people in the audience. We're gonna go outside on flyer, and we'll see if it works. Is that actually recorded? Yeah. <laughs> guys, stand-up comedy in 10 minutes, 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 stand-up comedy in 10 minutes. Yeah, no, I know, man. It, this is the thing, is it's like, no one wants to perform at this time, no one wants to watch anything at this time. It's a mistake. We made a mistake. But well, I really like your idea about messaging Laughing Horse. Yeah. Just abandoning this, basically, and getting a new venue. Mate, do it. Stand-up comedy in 20 minutes. I'm okay, thank you. Are you sure you're okay? Do you, do you not want to laugh? Time. <laughs> <laughs> the show of a lifetime. Okay, we're trying a new flyering method. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Stand up comedy, guys. Guys, stand up comedy. Stand up comedy, guys. Stand up comedy and tectonica. Yes. Like with post. Yeah, when you make a raid, you gotta take it. <laughs> That's how you fly her, I guess. <laughs> right, we're gonna keep the show moving. We're gonna get my co host of the show, and he's called the Vat. Hello, what the fuck's going on here? Hello. Oh my god, is this, this is the boyfriend and girlfriend. So, hello. Hi. What, what's, uh, what's, what, what? Are you aware of anything? What the fuck? I think we found a whole new kind of entitled cunt to talk to. <laughs> Right, we're not gonna we're not gonna carry on until. Do you fucking look at me? <laughs> What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Have you been socialised? I said hello on several occasions. And a micro this is a microphone. Oh my fucking god! Never do heroin. What's wrong with these people? English, English. Do you know what? They're having an argument. They're having an argument. Are you having an argument? What the fuck is it about then? Why did you take so long to react to anything? <laughs> right, cool. Let's just carry on. Okay, all right. So, uh, knock knock, who's there? A really awkward show. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ. What's the matter with you now, Annabelle? Look at her, as soon as the spotlight comes off her, she's like, oh, oh. Talk to me for a minute. Alright, cool. Jesus Christ. I, I will never want to talk to you ever again. 
I don't think you understand the level of vitriol I have towards you. It's like, if you have an accident after the gig, I'll be like, oh, thank God. Thank God. Yeah. I've got a wasting disease. Oh no, I'm absolutely over the moon. <laughs> right, we're going to bring up the next guy for the show. He's a marvellous carosis, he's a really good act. Start the wafting of a cheer. Electric in here now. Oh. <laughs> Michael, how many times I told you before you bring me on, don't wish death to the audience. <laughs> oh my god, and you guys are still talking. You know what's funny? What's funny about this is that you were supposed to save a seat for her, right? Or something? Because it's your girlfriend, right? And I, when I was arranging the seats, I came up to him. There was a seat. I was like, is someone sitting? And he's like, nah. <laughs> and in the end, I couldn't convince her. She was walking away, looking at me like, he doesn't know he's Polish, does he? <laughs> Guys, you need to stop talking. You're ruining my punchlines one after another. Should I? I wish you death. <laughs> I join you now. I was. I said, don't do that, but I get you. It's impossible to resist. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's a bit awkward now. I know. <laughs> I know. I can feel it. You think I can feel it? I can feel it. <laughs> you know, it turns out he wasn't beating me. He was uh, collecting empirical evidence. <laughs> okay, new stuff. That's fine. When I knew uh, that's, sad. <laughs> that's sad. I'm not trying to uh, get sadness out of you, I'm trying to get laughs, but sometimes you just flip a coin and when it lands, it lands. <laughs> hey, when a new joke doesn't work and it, you feel awkward, imagine how I feel. <laughs> I wrote it. A new, a new joke that doesn't work is kind of like a child that grows up stupid. Uh, you're like, I guess I'm not gonna show it to people then. <laughs> I do love it though. <laughs> My grandpa was religious, very religious. Uh, he's dead now. He was 95 when he died. Oh, actually, you're sad again. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna continue that joke. Uh, you know. So basically, before he died, he was in a, in a coma. Uh, and <laughs> we're going there. You're gonna you're gonna cry when I finish. <laughs> Oh my god. So he was, but it, I promise this is funny. <laughs> I promise, I've tried this before. This is funny. This is, we're not flipping a coin here. So he was, he was in a coma, right? And we knew he's gonna die. He was 95. Uh, listen, the, great joke. Uh, <laughs> great joke. No, he was in a coma. How many times will I have to say he was in a coma? Until you don't interrupt me. I'm getting sad. <laughs> okay, so he was in a coma. <laughs> Oh my god. And we knew he's gonna die, right? But they still operated on him. And I asked my mom, I was like, why do we do that? Like, just let him die. Like, he's already old. We knew he's gonna die. And my mom said, well, we have to say goodbye. And I was like, how selfish is that? Like, imagine waking up from a coma and you're like, am I dead yet? And your daughter's like, no, but goodbye. <laughs> Come on, kids, tell grandpa goodbye. Goodbye, grandpa. <laughs> Turn off that machine. That's it. <laughs> Go back to the eternal darkness. <laughs> okay, guys, you've been uh, a roller coaster. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs>our show starts in half an hour but we kind of give up on it at this point because the location and the time slot are just insane we cannot get people in i was talking to a flyer and he was like let me help you fly your show he was like what venue is this and i told him the venue and he was like oh okay that's not the best place he's like what's the time slot and i was like 1 30 p.m and he goes focus on your other show focus on comedy for hot people so that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna. But the thing is, we have an obligation. We have to go there, and then we have to like try at least. So we're gonna go and we're gonna try. <laughs> I'm just gonna show up and I'm gonna cancel the show and there's no one there and I'm gonna go back home and prepare for the other show. That's what's gonna happen. And our plan for now is to search for another venue. We're gonna search for another venue and during that time we focus on comedy for hot people. Do longer sets there. And that is where all the stand-up clips are coming from, by the way.
But I just moved here and the weather was really nice, uh, so I went camping for the first time in my life. And I would have went before, but what I didn't know is that camping is not about camping. Camping is doing drugs in a forest. <laughs> yeah, all of my friends eat shrooms. I don't like shrooms, so I did cocaine. <laughs> and what I found out is that cocaine is not a forest drug. <laughs> Doing, doing cocaine in the forest is kind of like eating shrooms of a prostitute's tits. It kicks in and you're like, this is not an appropriate effect for the situation. My friends were like, can you feel that we're one with the universe? And I was like, no, but I can feel that we should start a business. We should also buy some Bitcoin. This is how broke I am, this is true. My flatmate gave me his virtual reality headset and I've been watching VR porn. If you don't know what it is, it's porn where you get to look around, basically. <laughs> and I don't watch it to masturbate, I watch it because it's the closest I'll ever get to own in a house. <laughs> Every time I'm in, I'm like, this is beautiful! I love the rug. The girl is riding me, I'm like, get off me, Sasha, I cannot see my TV. I don't wanna fuck, I wanna watch porn on my flat screen. <laughs> And why is the light on in the kitchen if nobody's there? <laughs> Are you gonna pay the bills? I don't think so. <laughs> no. I don't know, I don't think I'll ever own property. But, well, to be fair, I was talking to my parents and they were like, Oh, you're 28, when are we gonna have a grandchild? And I thought about it, I realized I'm gonna have a child only when I own my own house and I'm gonna own my own house only when I inherit it from them. <laughs> so I was like, how badly do you want one? Because <laughs> there is a way. So I am at our new venue. Not only our venue change, but also our time slot. Instead of 1.30 p.m., we're gonna be gigging out at 4 p.m. And that's why Michael couldn't do it today and he will not be able to do it tomorrow because he has other stuff to take care of. So I have Dan Tiernan helping me because I cannot do an hour myself. He's just outside. We're gonna do some flyering and I hope we can get some people in. Ladies, are you looking for a show to see? It's gonna happen in an hour in Waverly Bar just there. It's me and another guy, we're super funny. Hey, we've got a stand-up show starting in half an hour, two amazing comedians, it's free entry, I'll see you as a... dead hard. I knew it was going to be bad, but I didn't think it was going to be this bad. It's pretty bad. Dude, the bunker is like five times harder. For this venue, if you are ever going to fill this, you need to do like... Two, Exit flyering. And two hours of flyering. I've, I d what do you think of... I cannot do this in an hour, it's not possible. Yeah. I believe in you. Thanks. Thanks I believe in you. I know you can. I believe in you as well. Man. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> it's gonna be all right, man. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. All right, everybody, start the clapping, start the whooping, start the cheering. Oh baby, we're going to have a good show tonight, very good to be here, give me a cheer if you've been to live comedy before, alright, we've got a shy crowd, wait, wait, people can't see you, one sec, one sec, Papa! what happened, nothing yet, oh, oh this is a professional show, here we fucking go, it's going to be a great show, there's a good energy in the room, this guy is fucking loving it, look at you mate, you silly wooden prick, <laughs> hey you two, hey you, hey mate, put your dick away, uh, this guy's, are you a couple, <laughs> hey what about these self-service machines, eh? <laughs> Kick the chair! Kick it! Oh my god! How did the... That's unlucky. Well, what can you do? Is that beer? I guess so. Oh my god, they don't know what they just did. Well, live. Guys, comedy for hot people, we'll fit right in. And I saw an article that said, why are millennials not having children? And I was like, I don't know, maybe because we all live in a shared flat. 
and a child is just one more fucking flatmate. <laughs> Like, I already have four, and I, I get along only with one of them. Like, he's very nice. He keeps telling me about his fetishes. Like, he told, <laughs> he's, like he's gay, and he told me he's into dog play. And I was like, what's that? And he goes, well, I put on some fur, a tail, a dog mask, and then I bring guys back home, and then I fist them. <laughs> and I was like, dude, uh, you and I grew up around really different dogs. <laughs> can you tell me the breed yet so I can avoid it? <laughs> You know how annoying it is when your friend's dog is humping you? Like, imagine your friend's dog is staring at you, looping up his paw. <laughs> You're about to find out I'm not a very good boy. <laughs> his biggest fetish, though, is sleeping with a straight guy. And a few weeks ago, he bragged to me after a night out. He was like, yesterday, I convinced a straight guy to suck me off and swallow my cum. And I was like, man, I'm sorry to break it to you, but he sounds pretty gay. <laughs> Yeah. And also, it's hard to draw where the gay line is. Like, my friend told me that when he was 15, he tried sucking his own dick, but he couldn't make it. So he just came into his own mouth. And I had the same reaction. He was like, I spat it out so it's not gay. I was like, I don't think that's where the problem is in this situation. As a guy, I find it weird that you would even try sucking your own dick. Because I have a feeling that even if you do make it, sucking your own dick still feels more like sucking a dick than getting your dick sucked. <laughs> I feel like if I was like in my dick, I'd be like, when is he gonna come? Should I put a finger up his ass? I don't know. Why am I not gagging? <laughs> I know. I like dirty jokes, you've probably noticed uh, by now. And uh, I feel like that's because when I was growing up, my parents used to talk about their sex life a lot. I think it did something to my brain. Like, I was 15, I was in a car with my mom. This is true. And she turns to me and she goes, Valdas, uh, do you think you'd like it if a girl licked your ass? <laughs> Because I don't know if all men like it, they're just your dad. And I was like, I'd like to die in a car accident. Because I don't want to live with this information in my mind. And the worst thing about it is, the first time a girl licked my ass, I was like, oh, an apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I want something in common with my dad. We both have a clip for an ass. It's day something something and uh, the bin men are on strike because they want bigger wages, I guess. I don't know, I haven't looked into it, but the whole city is just full of trash. This Canadian comic Jack had a great joke about it. He said that the seagulls must think it's the second coming of Christ. They're like, did we win a war or something? <laughs> it's a good joke. I am back at our new venue to do the split hour. And as I mentioned before, Michael cannot do it today. He will join me again tomorrow. And Dan was supposed to help, but he couldn't because he got drunk yesterday and he's super hungover he lost his voice and he's puking which is which really interrupts your stand-up comedy sets so what happens is i have to do the show myself it's a commitment to the venue i have to show up and i have to try and i tried flyering alone for the first time ever and i understood something about myself i am incapable of selling myself when it comes to other people, it's easy. like I can sell my friends, I can sell our compilation show. I'm like, oh, these guys are amazing, these are my friends, I find them very funny, and it's easy. But when I have to sell myself, there's some kind of a wall I cannot overcome. It's like, I don't feel like I'm good enough to do it. I give the flyer to people, and I go free stand-up comedy, and then I see they're interested, and then they're looking at me to elaborate, you know, to kind of like make a joke, to, to prove it to them that it's not gonna be awkward. And I fail at that because I do not believe that it's not gonna be awkward. And that's horrible because at one point in a year maybe, I'll have to go out and sell myself only because I'm gonna be doing my own show and not a split hour. And I have to become a better hustler. But maybe it's just not in me. Not everybody can go outside and sell themselves. And this realization that I do not have enough hustle in me is really making me sad right now. It's like an epiphany. It's like it's always been there. I could feel it. And now I'm contemplating, like, is it possible to acquire these character traits that I'm lacking? 
or is it just set in stone and it's just the way I am? I'm 28 years old and it's too late to change. I just had an idea. If I cannot sell myself, I'll just get someone else to do it for me. Uh, we will hire a flyer. Right, a little bit of a feedback session. I'm just gonna unveil something here, pardon me. Ooh, I like okay. <laughs> I know, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, you've got chairs on it. It's fine, we can work with this. Right, me and Avalis have a split show at 4 p.m. every day at the Waverley, and um, we've been struggling to fill it, and the reason is because this is the most sinister poster on the thing. <laughs> I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, look at it. It's a nice time, where's the venue? In the bunker. <laughs> There's many jokes about bunkers there, I'm gonna make none of them because they're all fucked up. And the thing is as well, it's so creepy, it's so sinister, and it's like, depending on which one you look at first, the other one becomes more sinister all the time. Like, he's gonna stab you, but he's gonna film it. <laughs> and the piece de resistance, the cherry on the top for all this, is straight stand-up, no gimmicks. Now, what we were aiming for there was, um, you know, you come to the fringe, it's like, oh, come to the the boomerang joke shows, a hundred jokes about boomerangs and they all come back and it's like, fuck that. Um, so we went straight stand-up, no gimmicks, but the whole thing, unfortunately, comes across homophobic. <laughs> so when you sell it, you say that one of us does 20 and then the other one does 20. Straight stand-up, uh, no gimmicks, it says that on here, which means that there's no musical comedy or anything, it's just straight okay. stand-up. My target market is younger people, for okay. sure. It, the set, it, like, the stuff I talk about is definitely a bit for millennials and stuff, and it's dirty and dark. Okay. Uh, sell yourself now. I thought you were going to sell me for <laughs> Oh, so, and, and he is my friend. He's your friend. <laughs> <laughs> I think my audience is a bit broader okay. than English, but we'll, we'll, we'll aim. Well, because, you know, racism hey. in this country is right. Very relevant. And, uh, is, that is that enough? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and, you know, just improvise. We don't really care. Okay. Just do okay. what you think is best. Attracts younger audience, famous, famous in Lithuania. Yeah. Dark comedy. Dirty dark. Dirty dark. Uh, and uh, very clever. <laughs> Very clever. clever. And Very handsome. And I handsome. have great hair. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I like my ears. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, Thank you so much. Absolutely. I had this big plan uh, for handing out water, being like, hey, have a nice time, stay hydrated, and uh, a, a Red Bull car has stopped 10 metres down the road. Not even that. And they're handing out free Red Bulls. I hate the fringe. <laughs> oh, my God. But, I'm not going to bottle them. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? I'm gonna go get some Red Bull. I don't even. I don't even want your water. <laughs> okay, so we flyered for two hours. We hired the flyer to fly her for one hour for us, and we're about to see if we have anyone in. Are you excited, Michael? Let's open that loot box. All right. We're about to see the fruits of our labor. <laughs> Ghosts, it's full of ghosts. Oh my God. Why aren't we getting anyone in? My God. How many plans can we have from moving the time slot to a different time slot, from changing venues, from, from, from redesigning posters a bit to hiring flyers? How many plans? are gonna fail. It must be Michael's shirt. There's no other explanation. I don't know. But I, I don't like Tinder because like you cannot put your height on it and I'm not a very tall guy and I was chatting with this girl and she was like, how tall are you? And I go, I'm 5'10". And she goes, oh sorry, I am quite tall so I only date guys who are at least six feet tall. Which is fine, a preference is a preference. But I just find it so funny that she wouldn't date this guy, right? But this guy. <laughs> Pussy licking master, this man. <laughs> this loser, though. <laughs> Could never feel safe around this chihuahua. <laughs> but this skyscraper of a man. <laughs> he brings a knife to a gunfight and then he stabs himself to even the odds. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this joke for like a month, I can feel my calms getting stronger. <laughs> I did go on a date with that girl, and I feel like she was not over her ex still, because she kept uh, talking about him. And at one point she said, I didn't break up with Andrew, because he was just so good in bed. Like, he's the only guy that's made me come. 
And I was like, why would you say that? Because now if we have sex and she doesn't come, we're gonna turn away from each other and we're both gonna think about Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> but for very different reasons. <laughs> She's gonna be like, how I miss Andrew. I'm gonna be like, how I wanna be Andrew. Oh, I know. Yeah. You'll come now. <laughs> no, she talked about him so much, I think I fell in love with him. Because I was in a grocery store and I saw a bottle of milk falling down and some guy caught it just above the ground and I was like, fuck, must be Andrew. <laughs> and his quick fingers, I heard so much about him. <laughs> Be careful, that milk is about to come. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to a gig now uh, that's called Comedy Striptease. The premise of the show is that if you do not get laughs, you have to strip. But the MC makes every guy strip. And I did it in 2019 and I have PTSD because uh, I had to strip with another guy. And I removed my shirt and you know, I'm a skinny little white boy. And he removed his shirt and he was ripped ex-marine. He looked like a bull terrier. Anyway, I have to do it today and I have to do it tomorrow and I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna document my mental breakdown. I'm about to strip, so I have to get hot. Get the music crank and let's make it sexy again. Yeah. Good shit, you've done a good job, boys. That's safe. It's 2.30 a.m. I just came back home and I had a horrible day today. I bombed a few times. I failed some social interactions. So I decided I'm going to give myself a little treat. I am going to watch my friend sleep uh, to calm myself down. It's like looking at the fire. Okay, so I think Michael finally found the line and the hook yeah. of the show. Uh, just watch. Guys, check out these creeps. Oh my God, they're creepy and funny, sinister. If we have people in today, that's going to be fucking crazy. Because yeah. all we needed was to admit. Check out these Thank you. Check out these Okay, so we flyered for two hours today. We hired a flyer. We had Michael's girlfriend flyering with us, telling people that she's not going to sleep with Michael, Michael until we have an audience. Let's see the turnout. We haven't been inside. Michael is inside. We don't know if there's people. Okay, big moment. Oh my God, I see someone. Oh my God, there's people in there. I don't even know what to do now. I, just, I need to do a set, I'm not ready. When I was still with my ex, we were like together for four years, right? And uh, the sex got boring and she was like, I'm gonna get some toys and she got a vibrator. And I was like, am I excluded from this transaction? And she was like, no, no, the vibrator is both for her and him. And I was like, how is that possible? And it turns out uh, that she gets the vibrator, I get the remote control. How lucky am I? <laughs> she gets to shake in orgasms, I get to turn on the LEDs. <laughs> and then shove it up my ass to feel something. Did you guys know that vibrators don't look like dicks anymore? Like, it looked more like a weapon for men in black. <laughs> Talk about impossible beauty standards. <laughs> Well, as a guy, not only do I feel like I have to have a big dick, but also a smaller dick on top of it. And an engine with a Bluetooth connection. And I went online to see if male sex toys got an upgrade, and no, the number one sex toy is still a flashlight. Like, if you don't know what it is, it's just a fancy sponge in a glass. And as a guy, you don't want people finding out that you have a flashlight. Because if you're a girl and you buy a vibrator, what you're saying to the world is, I'm fine with myself, I need no man. But if you're a guy and you buy a flashlight, 
what you're saying to the world is, I give up. <laughs> the only way to win the game is to not play it. <laughs> the annoying thing as a man is that the strongest erections you have is when you're 13. What a waste. You're sitting in your classroom and your dick's like, I think you're ready to be a father. And you're like, can I finish adding up these fractions first? I don't think I'm ready yet. We had the show. We, d we hustled our way to the other side. It wasn't the best show, but it was a show. And I just checked and we have sold some tickets for tomorrow. It's happening. We, we made it. We did it. Now off to another show. <laughs> you look like you'd love our show. Guys, you look like you would love our show. Guys, you look like you would love our show. Guys, you look like you, you look like you. Guys, you look like you. Ladies, guys. No, you guys. Guys, you look, you look. Guys, 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 you look. Guys, guys, ladies, guys. You look, guys, 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 you look. Guys, you look. I just came to the venue and we are doing a show to one audience member. I'll show you. But there's something up. There is something up. And it's just un, it's just undiscovered. Just Mannion syndrome or something. It, it... So we are on the way to our last gig. It's been a few weeks of canceling shows and then doing shows and canceling shows and doing shows. So I'm quite glad this is over. It's really the last time you'll see Michael. And uh, thank you, Michael, for being here. I love you. I love you too. I got flyer today, as most of you probably. And I took the flyer and it was a flyer for a church. And I was like, clever, they're going undercover. <laughs> I wonder if anyone ever got fooled. They went to the mass like, what a show! <laughs> the best I've seen. They're making a point there. You know, and on the flyer it says something weird. It said, uh, do you hate your job? Because if you worship God, you get to work for Him after you die. And I was like, wait a minute. You're telling me I'll have to work after I die? <laughs> like, is this world not enough? Give me a fucking break. Like, sometimes I already wake up on Monday mornings and I'm preparing for work and I'm like, hmm, should I iron this shirt or should I kill myself? <laughs> and now I'm afraid if I were to do it, I'm gonna wake up in heaven and God's gonna be like, just in time for the team building exercises. <laughs> and I hope you brought your secret Santa gift. <laughs> I'm not religious, but there's one religious thing I've done since I was very young, is that every time uh, I write God, is I capitalize the G. Because what if that's enough? <laughs> yeah, what if I die and I go to heaven and God's like, uh, okay, didn't pray, didn't ch go to church, but uh, Jesus Christ, that's a lot of capital G's. <laughs> I've never seen so many. Come in, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> and the priests behind me are like, really, that's enough? I've never seen a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> capital G's, it is them. <laughs> I am back in London, Edinburgh is done, let's go through my goals. So did I earn 800 pounds? No, I earned about 700 pounds, which means I have to borrow some money. Did I do 100 gigs? No, I did about 70 gigs. Do I have a solid 20 minute set? No, I have a solid 15 minute set. Was I seen by the industry? Uh, no, but I have some gigs in London uh, where I will be seen by the industry. Did I resist the sweet temptations of alcohol and keep my sanity intact? Uh, God no, I had a few mental breakdowns in Edinburgh. So I failed every single goal I had. Uh, would I do it again? Yes. Yes, because I was doing what I love surrounded by people that I love. And I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video because this took so long to make. Like I could have made at least 50 TikToks instead of this. And one of them popping would have brought me more followers than this ever will. Uh, so please like, share, subscribe because this is a passion project and I will probably never do anything like this ever again. And uh, yeah, um, I don't think Michael Jackson was a pedo. Well, I do think he was. No, you know what? Do your own research. Google.